because there's a couple of little conundrums that need to be worked out here. We're going to East London. It's West Ham versus Newcastle. And again, look at these prices. They are really are. If you fancy one of the teams, you're going to get paid handsomely. It's West Ham at plus 155, Newcastle at plus 190. That all of a sudden tells me the, the prices are too big. So let's look at the bottom and the draw is plus 235. Um Let's have a little look. Ma, 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 ba, ba. We're going to go to you, Marco, here, because over two and a half goals is at minus 110. Remember, West Ham are in Europa League action on the Thursday night. Newcastle going from strength to strength. Ooh, six and two threes, Marco, here. I'm not splitting these two, but I tell you what, I wouldn't put anyone off of Newcastle at plus 190, and I wouldn't put anyone off the draw at plus 235. Yeah, I found this a, a horrible game to try and analyse because... Uh, you know, the market is saying what it said pre-season, really, that Newcastle are the better team and the most likely team to be finishing seventh behind the big six. And but they're coming into this trip without Callum Wilson. And we still don't know the uh, the availability of Sam Maximan or Gimmerage as well, who missed out last weekend. And, you know, I would want them to be involved if I want to be pro Newcastle here. They they are a much tougher proposition to, to play against these days, Newcastle. But but that trio, especially, uh, add the, the X factor, really, for, for Newcastle. Uh, and they haven't performed hugely impressively away from home. I know they did very well at Anfield before losing, but, you know, they didn't bring the house down in draws at Wolves and Brighton already this season. West Ham do have European commitments. But I think domestically they have started to show us a bit more of what they're all about. Deserve something at Chelsea last weekend. Put on a really good shift in the second half against Spurs. We know they're capable, but again, just put off by defensive injuries, really. Um, started last week with a back three featuring Emerson Palmieri and Timo Kehrer. So, yeah, that's massively kind of alarm alarm bells ringing, really, if you want to back West Ham. So, goals-wise, uh, again, just, just no interest, really. These two are amongst the bottom four uh, of the Premier League in terms of total goals per game so far this season. Just three of their combined 12 games have featured over two and a half goals. And uh, I guess low-scoring games do tend to bring the likelihood of the draw into play. So, perhaps that is... The best solution here is just to to you know take the draw at a bigger price rather than sort of hang your hat on either team. Yeah, there's a couple of ways I want to look at this stinch, and the way that I did look at it was West Ham home side, but Thursday night they are in European action, so we're expecting maybe there could be excuses and a sluggish start. We're also going to look at. Newcastle going to Brighton and drawing nil nil, going to Wolves and drawing one one. They're going to Brighton and keeping a clean sheet the way Brighton are. You've got to give them credit. But I'm just wondering if these two are going to show each other a little bit too much credit. And bearing people, every time we look at every game in the Premier League, it's like both teams are scoring over. I'm not so sure with this one because it's minus 110 under two and a half goals. It looks like a nil nil one one. Yeah, potentially. I think especially with Newcastle's injuries and as you mentioned, West Ham being in action in Europe might be some tired legs. So, yeah, if I was forced into a bet, I'd probably be looking at unders. Mark uh, rightfully pointed out that both uh, both teams are in the bottom four for goals scored. Uh, I think I'm just kind of waiting for West Ham to click and basically Newcastle to get their first choice 11 back, essentially. Um but if you look at the prices here, I definitely don't think Newcastle are, are fairly priced here at plus 190. I think I think West Ham are are equally good as good as Newcastle, if if not better. And they proved that the last couple of seasons in the Premier League. So, and I also I quite like the fact they've now got Skimaka and Max uh, Corne, so they can rotate Antonio a little bit more. So it means that I think they will be a little bit they will be able to play uh, fresh players in the front line. At the weekend, I'm just as a bit concerned with their their um, form and performances going back towards even towards the back end of last season. I know last back end of last season, you can kind of caveat at it with the fact they were in uh, European semi final and, and obviously they had some tough games, so they were rightfully prioritising. But they just got off to a bit of a sluggish start of the season, so I'm just kind of waiting for them to click a little bit more before trying to side with them because I want to side with them away at Villa. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I know they won one nil, but they didn't play that well. Um, but I thought the price was too big, and again, I think the price is a bit too big here. But yeah, just want to see a little bit more from West Ham, and maybe just give them a few games for these new signings to bed in a little bit as well. Marco here, draw half time. It looks like it's on the cards, but then do we see a draw after ninety minutes? Because again, when you see that under two and a half goals is at minus one ten. It tells you it's a flip of a coin. If it's a flip of a coin, but the big the big price is on the draw. Yeah, I prefer just to take the draw at 90 minutes rather than any sort of half-time angle. 
purely because I think we're all sort of talking about the the uh, issues that uh, Newcastle might have in the final third with those players missing. Uh, the fact that West Ham might be sluggish. Uh, we like the ball. I think we all like the unders. And if you like the unders, then surely the draw is is a more value play there because uh, you know if it's going to be uh, an under two and a half game, then obviously nil nil and one one come into play. So um, yeah, two two thirty five on the draw would be my my selection if I had to. But uh, I'm happy to skip this myself. Yeah, and the, and this is another one we've got to make everyone aware. This is the first weekend of fixtures. That you're on the back of European campaigns. I know that some of these have had conference games, but listen, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck could have played right back and left back against some of them teams. It's in earnest now. It's the group stages of both European competitions. There's travelling involved for some, not for others. There's rest for others. So just make sure that you are a little bit... You do your homework and look for slow starts for them sides that are in Europe. Uh, official picks, I think I'm on my own here. But again, I've gone with value. I'm, I'm going to go with what I'm for. I think it's going to be a bit of a dull weekend. Or I don't think there's many teams that are going to pick up three points to save that way. You know, draw plus 235. All the others are around 255. But this game does look like maybe nil-nil or 1-1. One, one. 